Tell us about yourself and then describe your competency of CAS software, what kind of service and solutions do you provide for financial services industry? Yes, um, so my name is uh, Lev Lasokin. Um, I'm on the executive team of CAST and uh, I'm in charge of strategy and analytics uh, for the company. Uh, so as part of that, I get involved in uh, the various uh, ways that our customers use our analytics. I also do a lot of research on our analytics database, um, the uh, AppMark repository, which I'll describe later. Um, and I also um, am heavily involved in the marketing uh, side of the company. So in terms of CAST, uh, so what CAST um, does is uh, we analyze, we are a software company, uh, and our product, uh, our products uh, actually, uh, analyze uh, software uh, and measure um, various quality and risk characteristics of that software as well as uh, complexity uh, and size, functional size of software so that you can see how productive uh, software development is. Uh, so these metrics are used by organizations uh, that do a lot of custom software development uh, in order to run their business uh, and uh, these metrics are then used by these organizations to, um, to see how good they are at writing the software and make sure that they're continually improving uh, and avoiding serious risks. In the crash report, you indicate several health factors for software performance in the banking sector. Can you please tell us a little bit more about the findings of the research, please? Yes, um, so um, what we're measuring um, in terms of uh, health factors are um, actually five software characteristics uh, that are important uh, in order for the software to perform well for the business. Uh, so the first one is robustness. Um, and that has to do with basically how solid is the software, um, how likely is it to fail in production, uh, to have an outage or to corrupt data, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, the second is um, efficiency, which has to do with how scalable is the software and how uh, well is it going to perform given the same amount of CPU and network um, uh, hardware basically that it sits on. Uh, the third is uh, security, uh, which is a well-known concern. Uh, basically, how easy is the software going to be to break into? Fourth is uh, changeability, so how hard is it to modify that software if you need to add new functionality? Mm -hmm. uh, and the last is transferability, which is um, how easy is it for a new team or a new uh, vendor, if you're going to outsource, let's mm -hmm. say, uh, to pick up an application. So mm -hmm. we're actually um, measuring uh, entire applications. The crash uh, data set. So the CRASH stands for CAST Research on Application Software Health. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is research that we do um, on an annual basis. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, every two years we uh, submit, we, we create an overall industry report. Mm -hmm. um, once and then every other year, on the off years, we do vertical kind of deep dive. So what we did here mm -hmm. is looked at uh, the financial services sector, which includes investment banks and consumer banks. Uh, and we saw some really, I would say, interesting and sometimes alarming uh, trends. Um, you know, for one, uh, there are a number of um, what we call uh, system level issues uh, that we found uh, in uh, the banking applications uh, that we analyzed. We analyzed 430 applications across about 60 banking institutions in the U.S. and across Europe. Uh, and so the average application that we looked at is uh, roughly um, uh, half a million, over maybe 550,000 lines of code. So these are big applications. Uh, and when we analyze these applications, we look at uh, what the industry refers to as code quality, uh, which is uh, you know, just the, the quality of um, uh, kind of the hygiene, if you will, of the different code components that comprise these applications. Mm -hmm. We also look at um, the structural quality aspects, um, which really drive these the robustness, you know, the efficiency, the security, uh, quite a lot. Um, the code quality does as well, but the structural quality, which which looks at how uh, different components are assembled together into the system. Uh, and one of the things that was alarming that we found is that on average, the applications that we analyzed in the financial services sector had uh, almost 600. Uh, system level structural quality flaws mm -hmm. per application um, and that's a lot mm -hmm. and the, it's these system level issues that actually drive a lot of uh, stability, data integrity uh, and security problems mm -hmm. um, as well as performance efficiency problems that uh, can impact uh, 
you know what we see sometimes when high street you know banks uh, have have issues. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that um, we did is we looked at how these applications are different by geography. So mm -hmm. we split it out into three geos: mm -hmm. uh, North America, UK, and uh, continental Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, and what we found actually we looked at robustness specifically, and robustness is you know the mm -hmm. Characteristic that drives stability and um, you know outages essentially, um, and we found that the UK um, applications in financial services mm -hmm. were about uh, five and a half percent worse mm -hmm. on robustness uh, than the US applications, mm -hmm. uh, the ones in North America, mm -hmm. and then uh, the ones in North America were even worse, about thirteen percent worse than the ones on continental Europe. So mm -hmm. basically, the outages that we're seeing in the UK. Um, I mean, we would assume that they're partly driven by the quality, the structural um, soundness mm -hmm. of the software that's being run by uh, UK banks. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like the US is not far behind mm -hmm. in terms of the quality issues, mm -hmm. uh, but the Europeans on the continent uh, seem to be doing a pretty good job in general. And so those are some of the trends that we're seeing. Um, another interesting trend that we saw is that uh, the changeability of applications uh, in the financial services sector, and especially in consumer banks as opposed to um, uh, the investment banks, uh, was really quite low um, relative to the rest of other industries and compared to investment banks. And, and what that does is it, it sort of locks, it binds the mm -hmm. consumer bank uh, to uh, you know, a system that's very hard to change, mm -hmm. uh, which means that um, if you want to introduce new services and you want to change, uh, let's say you want to write um, new applications, apps that run on your on your phone, mm -hmm. uh, or new services online, uh, if your applications are less changeable, it's just that much harder mm -hmm. to introduce those new services. Recently, we have seen an increase in MIA, MIA activity globally. It's always hard to centralize IT operations during the merger. So, what's your vision of successful IT strategy for the organization in MIA and process? In my process. Okay. So, um, so that's a pretty broad question. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot that drives success M and A, uh, and we know that like marriages, you know, half of uh, mergers uh, or acquisitions uh, are deemed failures. Uh, you know, there are a lot of vested interests that drive um, uh, deals to happen. Uh, that sometimes may or may not be the best for the business operationally long term. Mm -hmm. um, but when you look at, so one of the success factors mm -hmm. of a merger or an acquisition uh, is uh, the ability to, um, uh, to, to use the combined technology portfolios of two companies, especially if they are heavy on technology, right? Mm -hmm. To use those combined systems mm -hmm. effectively. And so some of the synergies mm -hmm. that are promised to investors uh, in, in the M&A process are driven by the ability to cut down the cost of IT, but also to use that information technology to, um, uh, to merge the business processes mm -hmm. uh, into kind of one set of business processes. And this is where uh, the applications, the systems, and the complexity and uh, structural sort of reliability of the systems uh, in the two merging businesses really come into play. Mm -hmm. So one of the um, key success factors starts all the way with due diligence, we believe. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, when uh, a merger or an acquisition uh, is even considered, there's a due diligence process, mm -hmm. and typically that due diligence process does not go nearly deep enough mm -hmm. into assessing the structural robustness of the software that is being brought together, mm -hmm. uh, the applications that are being brought together. Uh, and so synergies are promised to investors, and then uh, those portfolios are dumped on the CIO's lap, and the CIO has to make do as best they can uh, with the systems that, that they've acquired. Uh, so that's one issue that uh, could be improved by using some measurement up front, analytics up front, see what is being acquired. The other issue is that as you go through the merger process, the post-merger integration process, um, uh, there are a lot of choices that need to be made about which platforms are selected to be the go-to platforms for the combined business. Uh, and a lot of times those choices are highly political, um, whereas those choices could be made uh, based on facts about uh, the, the quality of the systems that underlie the business processes. And so there, 
Uh, we believe that um, having strong kind of fact base and analytics base about the application software in, the, in, in both of the legacy businesses um, uh, can really help drive good decision making uh, for the go-forward strategy. Okay. Thank you. And uh, can you please describe the CAS software flagship products, the key uh, features and benefits? Yeah, so um, CAS has two main products. Um, uh, the first is the application intelligence platform, mm -hmm. uh, which is a, um, a very deep analytics uh, platform uh, that, um, that reverse engineers the structure of an entire application. Um, and we're talking about big applications, as we discussed before, that are half a million, a million, a couple million lines of code. Mm -hmm. So we take all of the source code components, all of the um, scripts, uh, the, the data definition elements, pull all of that together um, and, and get kind of a blueprint uh, of the application. Uh, and then what the AIP, the Application Intelligence Platform, does is um, applies a set of 1,200 software engineering rules mm -hmm. on top of that blueprint uh, of, the, of the application in order to look for structural flaws, weaknesses, and code quality issues mm -hmm. in that application. And then all of those issues are combined in these uh, five health factors that we talked about mm -hmm. that provide a measurement mm -hmm. of that application today in its current state, state and also how uh, uh, that measurement is trending as the application is uh, being evolved, mm -hmm. being changed, being enhanced. So that's AIP. Mm -hmm. The other product that we have is called Highlight, mm -hmm. uh, and that's a much um, uh, simpler analysis, also mm -hmm. analyzing code, uh, but it's really intended to be uh, run at a portfolio level, uh, and it's run, it's a cloud product, and mm -hmm. so the way that works is that uh, it's distributed through a link to all the application owners mm -hmm. uh, across the organization. The application owners then go to the Highlight website to the cloud product, they download an analyzer, they analyze their software right there on the spot, so their application never has to leave the owner, it doesn't have to be, the applications don't have to be pooled into a central place. Mm -hmm. They do the quick analysis, upload a quick text file with some size, uh, quality, uh, risk, complexity stats, mm -hmm. uh, and then that all comes together on the cloud in um, a portfolio of view of all the applications. So Highlight is kind of the, the mile-wide, inch-deep analysis, mm -hmm. and AIP is the you know, really kind of narrow, focused on one application, but very deep analysis.